Hello and welcome. Um, today I'm going to be doing a lighthouse painting. It is a lighthouse that is very close to where I live, about 15-20 minutes. The Biloxi Lighthouse in Biloxi, Mississippi. It's been there forever and ever. And it is a beautiful sunset picture that I have located in the lower right corner of your screen. And um, right now I'm just color blocking, laying down some colors for our rainbow sunset. And these are the actual sunset colors we have around here. Um, but they kind of look like a rainbow. So I'm going blue, purple, pink, and yellow and orange and red. A little bit, a tiny bit of red. So we get a lot of pretty colors here. Now I did want to show you um, this first thing that I did is I was trying something new as far as technique goes and I bought this really cool mop brush to do it with. Well, silly me, I didn't actually wet the brush and pull on it and make sure no loose hairs were there. So I ended up ruining my first canvas by having to pick out hairs and I couldn't get them all out. And so it left a texture on the canvas that I didn't really like. But I wanted to show you this section just to show you that nothing is ever perfect. It's all, um, you know, you do it until you make it right kind of thing. And you can see I'm even painting over trying to save the canvas. Um, and it's still, I couldn't get it right. So I went on with a different canvas, but you get the general idea of what I did with the color blocking and then just lightly, lightly swirling it a little bit with a dry brush just to, um, you know, make it more blended. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, the like button, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Ivy Creates. I hope you enjoy uh, this painting. It is a rather long video. So do beware, it, it will take a little while, So, uh, but it's worth it, you know, for watching everything we do. Now, now I have, after I let everything dry really good, I'm using a, what is it, a Master's Touch pastel pencil. I'll put it linked below. You can check it out if you want to get one. It's um, soft pastel pencil and it's white and it's really nice for um, writing on a canvas or that and you can erase it immediately. You probably get the same effect with maybe some chalk or something of the sort. I just happen to like the pencil, the way it feels. It's very comfortable. So the picture itself is more of my inspiration picture because I never do anything the exact same as everything else. So um, it is an inspiration picture. I am going to try to get close, but it won't be photorealism. It, it's more of, you know, it's just a nice painting. So, and it's super easy to do. Um, it, it did take a while because I wanted to get it right and get all the colors right and everything. But um, it took me several days on and off working on it. But it came out very well. Now you can see I'm just using a little small angled brush. And this is strictly for making a few little clouds and you just drop them in wherever you want. And I'm using a dark burgundy kind of color because you can see in the photo, it does have the darker red looking clouds right there. Um, this is our inspiration photo. So you can kind of see it is meant to have the little clouds and stuff in there. Please let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below. Tell me if you like this video or if you like my shorter videos. And um, I started doing some of the shorts that YouTube is now doing and they're beta, bait, I don't know what the word is. They've got a beta for it. And so I started doing some shorts and that's been mainly about my garden and my dogs and you know, just stuff around. So um, let me know what you think about the shorts. Um, if you use shorts, they're a lot like TikTok, but not exactly. And um, so now I am making my horizon line. I want my horizon line to have the, the water and be a little bit darker. And I'm, as opposed to the picture, there's a very small section that's, that shows the water. I'm gonna show a little bit more water in my painting because it is my painting and I can do whatever I want to on it and that's the way it goes you know um, Bob Ross would say we don't make mistakes we make happy accidents well for me it's it's your prerogative to do whatever you want on your painting and I hope you do 
I really do. So you can see the drawing of this is very simple and, and I didn't even have to erase this little chalk, you know, the past soft pastel. I can paint right over it with my paint and it's perfectly fine. You'll never even see it. So I'm using the darker purple to go around the outsides. There are many, this lighthouse is physically, it's white, okay? It's white with a black top. But when the sun hits it and at night, it's just full of all different colors. So I'm lining this with purple and now black on the outside edge of my lighthouse to give it definition to look like the photo, um, my inspiration photo. And you'll see all, it takes many colors to add to it to get it just the way you want it. And the other thing is, if you don't like it, you can paint right over it. It's no big deal. You can paint right over it and redo it as many times as you need to, which I often do, especially when I'm trying to get my proportions just right, because I'm not always that great on that. I do good landscapes, but, um, you know, trees and plants and floral and fauna and, and boats and things like that. But when it comes to buildings and people, you know, I really have to work hard on it. So um, you can see I'm just starting to add a little bit more color. Um, and I want to go in the up and down strokes to give it that wash of color. This lighthouse is also lit by some little lights at the base of it. So it does have more light than um, just about everything around it, actually. So I'm adding some yellow to the front to, to represent some of the light. And then I'm going to put uh, the yellow and then a little bit of green up underneath the bottom because it kind of glows on the base of the, um, the light up top. Please check out some of my links below. Um, use my links whenever you can. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're shopping for. You can go through my Amazon links and I'll still get credit for it. And um, this helps me to continue doing the videos. Also, I really, really respect and enjoy your opinions. So let me know what you think. If you have any comments or questions, um, I've been painting most of my life. And the thing is, is that I'm still learning. And that's always going to be the case when you do any sort of um, skill of any kind. You're always learning. And I love to learn new skills. So in this particular thing, I am actually doing a different style than I normally do. I was following a guy uh, called Color by Felix. He's on YouTube. He's a fantastic painter. And I think he's Ukrainian. But um, he did a wonderful job painting several different things. So I'm trying to do this in his style. And I do that on occasion. I try different people's styles, even though he doesn't have, you know, my Biloxi Lighthouse. Um, he's, uh, it's the same style that he was doing as I was watching him. So that's where this is coming from. I wanted to try, because he was like, these are acrylics that I'm using. And they're very, um, they can be thinned out with water to be very thin and transparent. And he was like, well, you know, people who've been painting for a while use thicker paint and things like that. Well, I've always been very, very, very frugal with my paint because I could never afford much. So, um, I tend to make my backgrounds really transparent at first and then come back and add more to them. Um, he's different. He adds a lot to the background, uh, thick, heavier paint and, um, lets that dry and then comes back and paints some, you know, more details into it, which his paintings are very fantastic. I've been watching him for a bit now. And, uh, but I, this, the technique was just, I'm going to have to work on it more to make it work because it just wasn't for me. Um, and I'll show you that in the next painting. I have another painting video coming up. That's the sister painting to this. And it is a, um, uh, shrimp boat with a palm tree and the same type of sunset so um, I didn't have a picture for that one that one's just came from me 
and I did it my technique and it looks almost completely different from the way he did it um, as far as that goes and and I like it better actually than the way he did it I just couldn't get the lights the way I, I wanted the light to show the light of the sunset so as with anything don't feel you ever have to be perfect and I swear to you you see this it's upside down right okay well I forgot to change the camera around because I usually do my projects upside down but doing a painting is much different although I highly recommend moving your cam your canvas in all directions whatever you're painting to make sure that you have your proportions right because the minute you turn them upside down or sideways or something if there's a mistake in the in your proportions it's going to show and so I eventually you can see turned my camera around finally so you could actually look at it and see it a little bit better and uh, that's gonna be now I'm working on some of the background with my dark dark green and black I'm missing them mixing them together now these are my little paint pots and I mix my own colors I keep them in the paint pots like I said I'm very frugal and you know that way I don't use a palette very often um, I just really don't because I mix everything in my paint pots and I might mix it on on a piece of um, a plate like a paper plate and that's pretty much it that's all I use I don't use a fancy palette and I'm still using the same little small angle brush that's really handy uh, and I did most of this painting in the angle brush with the exception of the background and you can see I'm just adding more little details and little colors and the paint pots you close them up you conserve whatever paint you have and there you have it for another painting that you're doing and uh, I rarely also clean my brush unless it's a drastically drastically different color than what I'm using because I tend to like to you know you pick up little colors and stuff from everything you do and in your painting and that's always a good thing I'm sorry I do have to turn it slightly to the side I am a lefty and uh, I've, I've got to have it slightly to the side I can't do it straight on because this is flat on a table um, I tend to find you know I used to get all these fancy easels and stuff and um, the they they just they're too hard to work with to be honest and I do have a a little board that I made that's kind of like a, a drafting top for you know if you did a drafting table now that was a little bit easier and I put a ledge at the bottom so that my canvas wouldn't slide off and all that kind of stuff um, but yeah those that's the kind of thing I use or I just use a flat table I don't use easels to paint very often and for me it's just they never felt stable enough or sturdy enough and sometimes I might really need to press hard or do something with my brush or my hands and I was you know scared they fall over so I do have many easels I just don't use them much now you see this little yellow spot that I'm doing interestingly enough when I really got to looking at this picture that was a light that was behind the lighthouse like just a street lamp so I ended up just because at first I thought it was a sunlight but it's not so I just kind of covered it up and um, blended it out and with acrylics you do have to blend quite quickly uh, it's good because you can skip around the painting and wait for something to dry within minutes but also if you want to blend you have to do it within minutes because then it'll be dry and you can't do anything but paint over it again I wanted to make sure that I have the the deep orange down here and the pinks and everything and the the light yellows um, and now I'm just adding little tiny lines to the water to give it a little wave look and I am also using a dry brush to blend
When I typically uh, blend for clouds, I go up with my dry brush first and then I go sideways. That's a, a Bob Ross technique um, that, you know, I did learn to paint from Bob Ross for the most part. And I usually like his style a lot. Um, Felix just really captured me you know watching his videos so I want to try and I still plan to try more of his style um, of painting this is a painting is a very cathartic um, it relaxes your mind and your body it uses all of your senses and it just makes you feel so much better to create something anything and you don't have to be a specific type of painter you can splat some uh, paint onto a canvas or just throw it on there or pour it on there however you want to do it and it's just really good for your psyche and everything because it, it just makes you relax and it puts you kind of in another place um, so that you're not as stressed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Leave me comments. I love to hear from you. Y'all are fantastic and I thank you so much for being here and sticking around to watch this really long video that turns out pretty cool um, in the end. So let me know. Let me know if you've watched any of my other videos. I would love to hear about it. Um, as you know, I, I've said earlier, I love my dogs. I love my boxers. Those are my babies. And I take them all over the place and we have a good time. And they are, you know, lots of trouble. But I love them. <laughs> so let me know if you've seen any of those videos as well. Now, the picture that was taken had to have been taken like after a good rainstorm or something because there was a kind of a glow onto some wet sidewalk there and so that's what I added with the light pink I really didn't use a lot of white in this painting because I really wasn't and you know that's one of the things in my brain that's always kind of hard to get past I know this is a white lighthouse and it's in my brain as being white but there's not a bit of white on it when it's at sunset it's all different colors And I will tell you, challenge yourself sometime not to use any white and even not to use any black. Use just colors to convey whatever message you're trying to convey on the canvas. This is a uh, 9 by 12 canvas and I find them anywhere and everywhere. You don't have to use a canvas to paint. Um, it's taken me years to get over just using canvases and to go on to other things like wood and, uh, you know, fence board and different things like that. Uh, there are a lot of ways you can do things. Now this, of course, in the photograph, there are two windows that show. The door to this lighthouse is on the back side of this. Um, and so the windows did have a glow to them, so I made sure to make them bright and glowy. This lighthouse actually sits in the center of a highway called Highway 90 and so the traffic is going either direction on either side of it because we have this highway that runs along the whole beach down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and no one really lives south of the highway. There's a few businesses and stuff in Biloxi but most, for the most part you ride down and it's nothing but beach and beautiful homes that it's like the dream drive you know beautiful homes up on the beach and so they the architecture here is really fantastic so this um i would imagine well i know back in the day it was the lighthouse to be you know seen and um out into the sand and all that kind of stuff and over the years it's become part of the land and the highway goes around it still very pretty though as you can see and on the photograph in the bottom right hand corner of the lighthouse you can actually see the Beau Rivage which is a really fancy schmancy casino around here um, I did not put that in the painting I didn't think it needed to be there <laughs> 
So now I'm starting to add in a little bit of my brown and green and uh, different colors of greens and brown and just pull it around um, because this is going to be our grass area. And also I'm adding the black iron fence that is at the base of my lighthouse. And I'm using the very tip corner of this little tiny angle brush, just the very, very tip of it to get my um, iron fence going. This lighthouse does have tours every day and um, you know we're very much on the coast the the sea culture we also just opened the Mississippi Aquarium which is really neat so you can see I'm just kind of curving it around my lighthouse a slight curve downward and that is to give it the effect that it's going around Now I'm going to add my slats for my fence, and this is very, very tiny. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. My next week uh, will be part two of this, and that is going to be my shrimp boat on the water at a rainbow sunset another one of my favorite types of paintings to do I usually just paint swamps because I love the swamp and we have a lot of them around here so I I usually just paint swamps over and over and over again I can never get tired of painting cypress trees my daughter requested that I do more painting so that is why I am focused on painting right now she is like you really need to put your paintings on so we're gonna try it and see how it works and I really do hope you enjoy it The trick when you're doing something small is to make sure that it's enough water to flow but not so much that it just, you know, gets muddy all over the place. And you have to keep dipping your brush into the paint to make sure you've got your paint on that little tiny tip. So now we're back to the black dark green and sage green and I just kind of go through the motions here of going straight across the canvas because this is going to be grass so you don't have to go individually or upside down it's just a lawn um, you don't have to be right side up and you can add individual grass strokes later if you want to um, my focus here is to put in some of the different colors to represent the grass and of course the grass is not an even color usually that we get our best um, sunsets in the winter time I don't know why but we just do and so a lot of our grass that's here turns kind of brown in the winter even though it's evergreen you know we have evergreen everything but um, it turns a little bit brown in patches sometimes so you want to kind of represent that as well and I'm gonna add a little bit brown in with my colors and use and as Felix does he uses really short strokes he doesn't use big long strokes which I typically do um, he used tiny little short strokes and that's why he uses such a small brush and to make everything super detailed with a tiny tiny brush so he does tiny strokes I did find from doing his techniques that um, it is helpful for doing things like waves and clouds and there is a lot to it because he actually spots out 
you know, like from top to bottom where something's going to go or he's going to draw, draw it out. And he draws it out with his paintbrush a lot of times. Um, I rarely really draw like I used that um, soft pastel before I paint. I usually just paint it. But I will say this, it has been a little difficult to get the proportions right on my lighthouse. So that's why, you know, I drew it out in advance. Now you can see um, my sidewalk to me looks a little wonky. I will correct that in the end. I go back and correct some of it, but it's just a basis to get me where I need to go. Thank you so much for being here and watching Ivy Creates. I really do appreciate you. Now you can see that I'm going to go in and add um, these smaller bushes and I'm just using like the straight edge of my little angle brush. And these bushes are actually going to be a little bit lighter. They're going to be the, the dark green and the sage and not have any black in them. And that's because I'm going to go back in a little bit and add more lighting because there's going to be two big lights that actually shine up on my um, lighthouse given it the colors that it has so you can see I'm adding just to the back of you know right by the water as far as my painting goes If there's something you would like me to paint or, you know, give me an idea for a project, please leave a comment below and I'll check it out and I'll see if I can maybe work it for you. Do you have any ideas of something you would like to paint or see, see painted? Um, I'm really thinking that I probably need to do like an ocean wave or something next. Let me know what you think about that. So now I'm doing the fronds of what would be a sago palm. Um, it's not really a palm, but you know, they, they call it that. I have no idea why, but it has really sharp uh, fronds on it and they're kind of short, you know, they're not really tall and slow growers. It takes them years to get big. We have a lot of tropicals here on the coast. And I'm just going in and adding some of the shrubs that I see in the picture, um, trying to get them as close as possible. The thing about painting is, um, you know, I go through different trains of thought all the time. And when you're painting, it's something that you're doing to add beauty or to relax or whatever the case may be. Now I'm going to add yellow to these shrubs so that it looks like the light is shining on them. But um, painting is never meant to be photorealistic. Um, it's good if it looks very similar to the photo, but it can be abstract. It can be a little bit different. However you want to do it, it's your painting. So I'm adding yellow and white to this to make it more highlighted. And then I'm going up to the top to, to fix that a little bit. You know, the roundness of my uh, top piece on there. It was bothering me, so I went back and redid it a little bit. And since I have the black open, I, I believe I'm going to go ahead and paint the lights down below. And see, like I said, if you don't like something, paint over it and you won't even see it and that'll be fine. I'm sorry, y'all. I should have cut that. I didn't even see it. <laughs> I should have cut it more.
All right, now you can see the base of the light that I'm painting. It is a black light. And you see I put just a little bit of yellow on the ground too, and I'm going to go back and add a little bit more. Yep, my love is definitely painting more than any other thing that I do. And I love to learn new life skills. Um, anything from cast net making to, you know, uh, how to build something like a, um, a lean-to shelter. I've been doing that since I was a kid. But um, I love to learn new skills. I like to call them life skills, which is something they really don't teach in school anymore. And I'll tell you, for somebody like me who goes into school, and uh, if I can remember from a very early age, of course, my favorite was always art when we did art. And I was in elementary school when they really cut out art and music, both. And for someone like me that lives for art and music, it's very difficult because I don't care a thing about sports of any kind. I was an art and music person, and it made it really difficult in school for me to pay attention and be able to learn because um, I was just not into it. I was an artist. Well, wannabe artist. Let's put it that way. And I'm just layering thin color over thin color over thin color to get exactly to where I want to be. And as I've said before, you're never making a mistake. You can always paint over it. And you're not going to notice it later if you're painting over it, you know. So um, feel free to do whatever you got to do. Just paint until you're happy with it. With doing oils, I loved to do oils. However oils do not dry for months months so if you do an oil painting you have a lot of time of course to to move the oils around the the canvas and that creates a lot of good things when you're trying to blend but then again it takes months and months for it to dry so it can get messed up you got to have a place to store it where it won't get touched and um you know, it's just, it's too much. That's why most people try to do acrylics nowadays. Just adding a few little stars here and there. There was a star, I'm assuming probably a planet, right next to the lighthouse. Definitely learn how to mix your own colors because that saves you on um, having to purchase a bottle for every color that you want to use. Um, it's super easy to mix your own colors and just play around with it. Um, I mix colors and most of the time I use the Americana paints and um, I mix all my own colors. Uh, there's the links. Links are down in the description if you want to go and purchase Americana. But... Um, I use those and mix them up and then I have some folk art. My magic stuff is the metallic royal gold. That's my favorite and it adds the little bit of magic to everything. A lot of times I will go into like my browns and reds and black even and add just a touch of that royal gold and it gives a shimmer to my paint that I like. Um, the other thing I do, I always add a little secret to most of my paintings. And it might sound silly, but it's actually quite fun. And that is when I'm done and everything is sealed, I'll go back over some of the lighted areas, um, the lightest parts of the painting, and what would be logically light, um, like the star or the, the light in the lighthouse. And I will use the glow-in-the-dark paint 
just to skim over the top so when the lights go down and you see one of my paintings it kind of looks like um, it's going down at night and it's been fun I did a whole bedroom for my niece of clouds and I did clouds and I did stars all over her ceiling and clouds all over the walls started with a base of blue and then worked from there and I also added all the glow in the dark for her whole room and it was just really super cool the way it came out because you could go in there and shut out the lights and I had glow in the dark stars on the ceiling and glow in the dark clouds I painted on the walls and it was just like really fascinating so you know think out of the box on things like that uh, there are lots of fun things you can hide in your paintings that no one might even never know they're there until you know they get it home and put it up on the wall and then all of a sudden they're like where did that how did that happen you know I like to put little tricks in there like that it's fun you know keep keep your fun about you don't be too grown up <laughs> Most things are, are better with a childlike vision anyways. I had um, on my home prior to Katrina, I had painted most of my closet doors. They were sliding closet doors or and some of them opened. And so I had one in the living room that was um, it was painted like a French door and like you could see the ocean because I was only three blocks from the beach but you could see the ocean back behind it behind the door you know like it opened up to walk out to the ocean and then my bedroom had a on my closet I painted a stone balcony overlooking the swamp at nighttime and that was really neat too um, in my daughter's room, I painted a giant tree up the wall and a beautiful garden and all that business, and it came out really great. And then Katrina took every bit, but that's okay because we, we rebuild around here. We, we fix it up, um, and I don't live so close to the beach anymore. I'm back in my the house I grew up in, but, um, you know, it's okay because we rebuild and, and move on. And that just leaves me more to paint. So now I'm going to add another sago palm. So I'm putting in my uh, stems first, my fronds first. Surprisingly, I did manage to save my closet doors and they are still in my shed and I still, all these years later, do not know what to do with them, but I couldn't throw them away. <laughs> So I'm just adding final touches and making sure all my colors are working right and I'm gonna you know make sure that everything looks as close to the picture as possible um, not exact but you know close to the picture thank you again so much for watching I really do appreciate you being here it is summer here June and all my garden looks absolutely gorgeous, um, but it is so muggy and hot and humid. I think we've had rain. We just had that little tropical storm Claudette come through, which wasn't much of anything. It's like an afternoon thunderstorm for us, but uh, we've had so much rain and everything is so lush, but it is so muggy outside. You walk outside and it, the, the air literally sucks the breath out of your lungs because it's full of moisture. On the upside, they say southern women who have lots of humidity also don't wrinkle as much as people who live in drier climates. <laughs> I suppose that's a good thing. The 
there's a little bit of sage green lighten it up a little bit more and this is a, a yellow green color um, it's a color that I mixed and made it you know added more brightness to it and since these fronds usually kind of point up or that I you know blended upward with my dry brush How, how much you blend depends on the weight you put on the brush. Um, if you're using a dry brush to blend, the lighter the touch, the better, because that way it blends it very, very softly. Okay, now I'm going to be adding some pinks and uh, a little bit of red in the blooms on the bush. So I want to kind of start with a red base and then work my way to a lighter color. So I'm just basically uh, dropping the brush down on the canvas and just a little bit to make uh, little smudges of uh, flowers you you know this is a very abstract way of doing it um, you're not going to be painting individual flowers you want to just kind of smudge a little paint on and give the illusion of flowers it helps to know plants when you're um, trying to do landscaping you know photographs or I mean uh, paintings it helps to know a plant and know what they look like in how they're going to flow. As you can see, I'm now going to correct my sidewalk where I didn't like it before and the plants are coming out now to uh, correct my sidewalk. They were pouring over the sidewalk in the picture anyways. Thank you again for sticking around for so long. We're almost there. It's just a few more minutes. Um, did not intend this to be an hour long video, but you know, that's what happens. But you know, that's okay. Cause you get to see the details. If I'd had it pulled out all the way, instead of doing a little bit faster, good Lord, we'd have been here for days. Now, again, I added some of that yellow green um, in there to give it more brightness. And now I'm going to start with some very light colored pink, like a baby pink, to add highlights to my red flowers. And I'm basically using the tip of my little slanted brush and just putting little dots of color here and there. And now I'm using a medium pink and I'm going to add some more little dots of color to give it that, you know, um, light and dark balance that you need uh, to make it more dimensional.
if you decide that you painted too much of one color and it's not showing enough of another color, you can always go back and add the darker colors or whichever color you think you need more of and just dot it over it and it'll bring it right back to where you started. So now I'm going to do a um, start with a dark, dark blue um, on this other bush over here. We don't have a whole lot of blue flowers around here, but we do have a lot of purple. So this ends up looking more of like a purpley color when I get done with it. Most of our fall colors for our wildflowers, which are going to be mostly daisies and uh, there's going to be liatris and a lot of other things, but we have a lot of purples and yellows. Um, and our state flower is actually, strangely enough, our state wildflower is uh, Coreopsis. And I thought that was really odd, but it does grow along the roadsides everywhere here and it's yellow and uh, nice and sunny looking. Now you see me going over to my paper towel. All I'm doing is wiping excess paint off of my brush um, just to make sure that it's not, you know, too muddy looking on my canvas. And I'm going back and adding the baby pink to this and um, just making it more, you know, purpley colored lavender. God knows. I wish we could grow lavender here, but we can't. It's too humid, doesn't like our humidity. Um, I'm trying out the Phenomenal Lavender this year and uh, so far so good, but I have them in pots. I didn't plant them in the ground because I didn't want them to get too soggy and we'll see how that goes. Cause I do, my favorite scent is lavender. Lavender and like citrus. So now I'm just taking this and kind of adding a little bit of white and I want to do it very, very, very lightly to make it um, look so, you know, realistic, very lightly. White is all, of course, always a great highlight, but try, try, try to do a painting without it. It's very hard. I hope you're having a wonderful day, afternoon, whatever the case. Um, and I'm excited for you to see my next video because I did paint these like one right after the other. And that'll be next week on Thursday. Never underestimate the power of a finger to blend. Fingers make good blenders. Just make sure that there's no other paints that are wet on them. <laughs> now I'm gonna add a little bit more of my pink and I'm adding that up to the top to be part of the reflection in the lighthouse it's it's reflecting the light off of the inside top of the lighthouse
thank you again so much for watching. I, I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson and stick around for my final product pictures and a sneak peek of the painting that I'll be doing next week. Um, and also there's a few other pictures and stuff of just for enjoyment and have a wonderful day, night, whatever time the, whatever time it is, have a wonderful time. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate you. I really do. subscribe button.